Oh, by the way, right now I'm using this as my sound. So you can gauge, see if you like it or whatever. But first thing you do is you have to remove the cover. Cover just pops off. Put that off to the side. The I don't know if you can see it, but the oil thing's down here and the filter's right there. Let me put you in a different spot because you can't see either one. Uh, okay, with the Land Rover, you want something like this, the Mighty Vac. What you're going to do is do a vacuum and it's going to go through the tube and up here, you just remove that. See that metal ring right there? You put the tube right on top of it. Okay, that will go all the way to the bottom of the pan and it'll suck up all the oil. Now, for everyone who says that sucking up the oil through this tube will leave sludge and stuff at the bottom, for every four or five, uh, every four or so, um, pumps I do with the oil, I actually do drain it from underneath. But I have tried when I first got the truck. I have pumped the oil out completely from up above. And then I went underneath and pulled the plug on it. And to see how much oil was still in the truck. And it put out maybe three drops of oil from down below. If you have a Land Rover, this is basically what you want. You want something like this. You just want to crack it by hand, and then I'm going to pull this off, and then I'm going to turn this. And that by that, it should get some more air. And it should pump out more. <laughs> this is the filter. My left hand's not very good. All right, here we go. Now I got a loop. And that's the filter right there. I'm going to pop this off. And it clips down in there. Let me go wash this up and I'll be back. Okay, now what you want to do is this rubber right here needs to come off. You're going to need to find yourself a little pick. Flathead screwdriver would probably work too. Just grab underneath. Pull it off. Clean off the inside and let that sit. I use pure later stuff. And this is the filter. Got a little clip on it. And whoa. Inside the box, you will get a little over it. Now you take this O-ring and you put it right on that groove. You put it around the groove and you stick it in there just like that. Now, you're going to take a little bit of oil and you're going to run the oil around the outside just for lubrication so you can get it down in there. As far as this goes, the little clips right here, you're going to clip it to that base down there. Put it in the hole, get it where it needs to be, like nothing. All right, it clipped in. Take a little bit of oil and put it across it. And then I put it down in there like that. Get it tight. Make sure it's all the way to the base. And then you take your little spray 
clean up the area. Woo, that stuff stinks. All right, we put it, put a funnel in there like that, and we start loading the oil. The oil should be 8.5 quarts. And so right now, this is six quarts, and then I'll put two and a half more quarts in after this. This is mobile one oil that I use, and I usually use a mobile one filter, but I couldn't get a hold of one, so I used a pure later filter. And I change my oil every 10,000 miles. The Land Rover recommends 15,000 miles, but I always change mine at 10,000 miles. The other thing that I do differently is that on the cap it says 5 weight 20 is the oil that you're supposed to be using. I use 0 weight 20. So it's 0 when it's cold and 20 when it's hot. It works fine in here, no problems whatsoever. The only real reason I'm using this is because my other three cars that I supply oil for, do oil, do oil changes and stuff, they all use that oil. So I figured I can go down five weight in the morning, use zero weight. I don't see any problem with it. It's just going to be able to move a little faster early in the morning it's going to be able to start up a little easier but besides that it's still 20 weight and that is pretty much it take the cap put it back on clean up your mess since we didn't have to remove the from the bottom, then there's no leaking. Put things back. As far as this, you put put the cover back hard and boom, you are done. And that is an oil change, which is rather easy. Uh, I'll try to leave some uh, links down below to the little pump that I was using, a couple of the little tools I was using. Um, they are Amazon link, affiliate link, so if you click on it, it'll kick me a little bonus, but it does not increase your pay in any way of the parts or anything, but it will help me out. I have some other projects that are coming up with the LR4 that are going to come out from modifications to it. And if you guys are interested in the LR4, let me know down below because I have modified this truck. And guess up, you can see there's a battery under there. I have a battery under here and I also have a battery under there. And these are huge batteries. And I have trip fuses right here. This trip fuse goes to the back. If I don't want any power to go to the back, I trip on this. Uh, on, there's a trip fuse on the other one. It goes from the trip fuse. So I'll go ahead and pull this off. It goes from the trip fuse. Let me turn off the engine. Okay, on this side, I have dual batteries. And let me know if you guys want me, want to see anything else about it. I installed dual batteries. It goes all the way to the side. Hey, there's a screw down there. But it goes all the way to the side. These are solid on there. 
These are all solid. Go across. My ground's coming off of here. Uh, this is the positive. This is the trip that goes to the trunk. In the trunk, I have uh, 20 or 12 volt sockets. This is my main battery. This is the trip that goes to that battery over there. But in between here, back there, there's an isolator. So that if I go camping, I can stop the vehicle. I can trip the isolator. And then the socket that's in the back will still function. And it will, it will uh, do everything from here. This is an H6 battery, AM, AGM H6 battery, and it pulls all the power from this battery. And I still have battery to start up with. <laughs>